Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel, where in part 2 of my token lighting tutorial video I'm going to cover how token lighting can work from a player's perspective. We will look at how you, as a player, can now create lighting effects using new effect keywords that have been introduced, as well as assign durations to those effects and what they have for limitations. This video won't be as long as part 1, and that is due to what options the player has for creating these effects, and once it is created, making the rest becomes really simple. What we will do, however, is look at adding effects for the candle, the torch, the lamp, and the lantern from an item's perspective, as well as look at adding effects to the light and darkness spells, if they're not already there. I haven't looked yet. This should provide enough information to be able to allow players to create various light-related effects. So the first thing I'm going to do is open up my character sheet for my cleric, who happens to be human, and check to see what they have for their inventory. In this case, they have a candle, so I'm going to pop that open and see if I can drag and drop that into my action tab. We should see that it doesn't work. That's because for some reason you can't do that with items. Not sure why, but it is what it is. So instead, what we're actually going to do is something a little bit different. We're gonna create a new power. We're then going to call it a candle. And for organization, I'm just simply going to call this uh, candle for now. <laughs> just so that we can see that it's in the right group. I could have called it something else, but for now, this will suffice. I am then going to go ahead and create a new effect. Pop that open, and I'm gonna call this the candle. Semicolon, I'm gonna call it light, colon, and because a candle has a preset, I'm just gonna put in a five foot candle. So the first number that you have here is going to be the range. The second, number is either going to be a preset or a subsequent set of values that define the rest of the light. Now, how much does this, or how long does this last? This lasts for one hour, so I'm going to add one hour to this. And this is how you can essentially go and add a duration to a lighting effect, so that over time, you would end up having to go through and burn through your candles. How is this going to work? Well, now it's pretty straightforward. You can either target yourself or you can give the candle to somebody else. That's the reason why I left the targeting as targets rather than something else. And it won't expire unless it gets destroyed. In this case, I'm going to drop the effect directly on to the cleric. And you should have seen right away that we now have an effect that is occurring around this particular cleric. And if I select that cleric, because I'm still in the DM side of things, I will see exactly what that effect is doing to them. If I click on another character, I will see that the rest of the room is still being viewed in their dark vision view, but the area around the character now looks like normal light. Very similar behavior as to what we had prior. So now I'm going to go ahead and give our cleric a torch. I'm going to go to the inventory tab. I'm going to go to items and I'm going to look for torch. I'm then going to drop this into place. And seeing as I'm here, I might as well grab the lamp as well as the uh, lantern. And there are a couple of ones here. I'm just simply going to do a standard lantern, which for now will be a hooded lantern, and leave it at that for now. So, the only reason I did that is because of my OCD. Technically, I really didn't have to add these items here because, as we've already indicated, it can't actually create an effect inside of the character sheet by dragging and dropping it into place. What we can do, though, is open up this candle effect that we have already created, which you will notice here is a spell, and drop that into place to create a new one. I'm going to rename this to Torch. I'm going to keep this... Actually, you know what? I'm going to create a light group. And I'm going to move this in there too. Get rid of that. There. Now it makes a little bit more sense. And I'm simply going to modify the actual effect here. A torch typically casts a 20-foot area. And there's already a preset for a torch. So if I go ahead and delete the effect that's in place for the candle, and then drop 
the effect in place for the torch. Let me move the uh, thing out of the way so you can see what happens here. We can now see that a torch, a much larger area, has been essentially revealed to us. That's the effect of the torch. Now I'm going to quickly go ahead and create one for the lamp and one for the lantern and then show you what that looks like. So I've gone ahead and created a new lamp and new lantern entry. The lamp itself has one effect that is going to cast a 15 foot radius of light around the player, whereas the lantern has two options. The first is a 30 foot reach, uh, reach or radius, if you will, on the light that's going to be cast from it, whereas the second option is a five foot reach, and that is because you can hood over this lantern sort of to dim the light. So I'm going to drop the lantern effect into place first, or the lamp effect, sorry. And we can see that it creates a reasonable radius around the character on the map. I remove that and then go ahead and create or drop the effect for the lantern, the bigger radius. You can see that it casts quite a bit of light out there. Whereas if I do the five foot reach, it's much closer to the player. And it doesn't flicker. Now, if I use the candle, I just want to see if the flickering effect is part of this default. Yes, it is. So the presets do have the graphics effects for the flickering and whatnot already in place. Excellent. Now I'm then, even though this is a cleric, I'm going to modify the light spells or add the light spells to this character. So let me uh, dig out light. Uh... So daylight, ooh, that could be an interesting one to try to uh, create an effect for. I'm going to drop this into place here. And I'm also going to pull out darkness. So with the light spell, when you drop it into place, it does not set up the light effect by default. So it doesn't look like it's in the game. So we're going to have to go ahead and actually add in a new effect here. I'm going to call this light because it's for the light spell. And then I'm going to go light colon 20 light. Now the light spell has a preset. This is going to last for uh, this is a concentration one hour. No, so it lasts for one hour. And now if I apply that effect to, say, something that my character is holding, we will see that the light spell has now created or cast light within the room. Excellent. Now, this might be defaulting to the normal light. I'm not sure if light itself is a, um, a uh, preset, but I think it is. And that's mainly because it's a preset in here. Now I'm going to do the same thing for the darkness spell. Now when I tried this earlier, a few things went a little funky. I'm going to create a new effect here. I'm going to call this darkness. Semicolon light, which is kind of somewhat ironic. I think it's a 30 foot radius or 20 foot radius darkness. Let me just confirm on the spell itself. No, oh, sorry, it's a 15 foot radius. So it's a 15 foot radius around where the spell is cast. And it lasts for up to 10 minutes. Or until concentration is broken. Hence that. So I'm going to drop this into place. And now what we will see is that no light appeared around the character. In addition, anybody within reach of that area of light can't see. But you'll notice that you're not seeing that sphere of darkness around it. I don't know why that is the case. It might be a bug. This might not be the correct preset. I think it is because it is working. But even though the effect works for somebody who is in reach, the minute you move out, you can no longer see the edge of the actual darkness sphere itself. But it is effectively doing what it is that you want it to do.
So what about a custom light effect? Well, I'm going to go back to this light spell. And I'm going to adjust this a little bit. And I'm going to get rid of these presets. So you are also able to actually go ahead and create lights with different colors. So if I do, for example, this with, let's see, I'm using this for an example. And I'm not sure why it is eight sets of hexadecimal values as opposed to the typical six that you would see for a web coloration. And I'm not going to put in an effect. I'm just going to see what this does. So I'm going to go ahead and drop this effect onto my character. That is a weird yellow color. <laughs> okay, now there are effects and you can use the same three presets that are available here, flicker, pulse, or flash. I'm gonna use flash, and I'm gonna set the duration to 25. And that, I don't know if that is in milliseconds or not, but technically the maximum value you should put there is 100. So let's see what this does. Oops, didn't apply it to anybody. And as we can see, it's got a very slow flash. So it is flashing. I didn't want to put anything on here that might cause someone some issues. But it does show that you can create these effects. So you could theoretically cast light on an object that does this if you had the ability to manipulate the spell in that way. There may be other spells that have this capability that you can do that with. So this just goes to show how much flexibility you as the player have in relation to these lights. And it looks like that darkness thing might actually just be a bug. So I'll raise that with Smiteworks and see if that is something that they can look into. But beyond that, this is literally everything that you can do with the light effects from a player's point of view. So I would strongly encourage any player within my troop to go through and create any of these effects in place so that I, as the DM, don't have to go back and apply those later on <laughs> when somebody casts or, uh, uh, the light spell or decides to pull out a torch or a candle, things like that. Anyway, I'm going to delete that effect so I don't drive somebody nuts. So I love the fact that Smiteworks has gone ahead and added in these lighting effects. I love the abilities to, to add a little bit more perspective and environmental atmosphere, if you will, to each of these maps as we move forward. As a DM, I think this is going to provide a much more interesting maps overall because you can actually go through and create lights within the map itself, which is outside really of the scope of this tutorial, highlighting those avenues and areas that you potentially make use of to lead players to specific locations. As a result, I hope you found this particular video informative and useful, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. I wish to thank you for taking the time to watch this particular video. I hope you found it informative and useful to familiarizing yourself with Fantasy Grounds in general and that you had fun in the process. If you found the video useful and you liked the content of the particular video, go ahead and click that like button to let me know. And if you have any questions specific to the topic covered by this particular video or just have some comments in general, please feel free to post something in the comments section. I will do my best to respond to any questions that are asked. Additionally, I do release content quite regularly, and it's generally specific to Fantasy Grounds or 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons at this time. So if you'd like to be notified when new videos come out, go ahead and subscribe and click the notification bell to ensure that notification is sent to you when I release a new video.